I wondered if we could start talking about um, late goals, Neil. I think um, five goals you've scored this season out of your 18 have been in the last minute or in stoppage time. There was another late goal, albeit you know, in the last 10 minutes at the weekend. What, what does that say about, uh, about your team this season, do you think? Good question. I don't really... I never really focus on times of goals. I mean, maybe if it's goals against you and they're happening within three minutes of the restart of uh, of half time or something, it might be something you look at for what you're doing at half time. But yeah, I, I haven't really noticed it. Um, it. It can be a number of things. It can be down to the fact that you're always pressing, trying to um, get a goal. You know, uh, always trying to win games of football because obviously that's the expectation of our club to, if we want to be where we want to be at the end of the season. Um, probably does show good fitness levels to a degree um, to be able to, to keep that going. But but maybe it could be good subs as well as far as not the substitutions I make but as the options I've got off the bench. You know, it's sometimes when the game needs freshening up or a change, um, you know, like on, on Saturday being able to bring on someone like Enzio Baldwin in, in a game at this level is is um, you know is a very good tool to have that m some other clubs might not have so so it could be a number of things uh, but long long may it continue. Yeah, so it got me thinking about the patience and particularly with Kyle Wotton who you know missed a couple of chances but stuck in it to then go and get that goal and I think of the late goals you've scored you know that that belief even at two one down at Chesterfield or goalless at Sutton that you, you still. Still, that self belief in there is there, are they factors as well? Do you think? I think we tr it's what we try to create, you know, and um, we are trying to get a little bit of a balance in the way we chase games, for want of a better word. I say chase games, you know, if we're we, Chesterfield, we're losing one nil with ten minutes to go. Um, the other day, it's twenty minutes to go. It's nil nil in a game. We 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 want to try and get the three points on the board. So, um, you know, it's we're trying to find different ways of doing it. Um, but it's, you've got to be careful not to come away from what you're about. There's no point in spending you know, most of the time on the training ground working to make sure you're all on the same page. We've got a playing style, a philosophy, and then the moment things aren't going well, just throwing it out the window and saying, right, punt it down the field, everyone run. Um, you, know, you, have to, you have to try and get the balance right of when it's needed and when it's not. Yeah, but you have got a couple of different styles of player formations that you like to use, haven't you? That not not all teams do, uh, perhaps particularly at this level. Has that been really important for you to have those options, not just in personnel, but in terms of systems to to mix things up if need be? Yeah, I think so. I mean, when I when I finished playing, I had six, seven years as academy manager at Cardiff, and I, I sort of played around with loads of different formations within the uh, under 18s under 21 setup and tried to work out the strengths and weaknesses of them all and you know what what when opposition play certain shapes and that, that was my grounding I felt like um, to be able to you know put a system in place and make sure the players all know how that system works to its to its best um, so yeah it's good to be able to have them options in games um, but at the end of the day it will be the players that execute it and uh, we can do all the training on the training field but if, if good players come on and execute it well then, then that's a massive help. How much are you enjoying the there's a run of clean sheets you're, you're building up as well at, at the other end of the pitch? It's always nice when I haven't got my head in my hand after we've conceded a goal <laughs> I can assure you um, you know so it's, it's, it's great and, and you know we've the last couple of games we've almost had a bare a bare four defenders fit so so they've they've done remarkable to stay fit and and keep us through that period while the others are getting back to fitness but um you know also I know we we talked about it the other day I talked about it with with Lee the other day you know Ben Turner's resilience to be able to not be in the team fighting for his place get his chance you know have the disappointment in himself of what happened at Halifax and then bounce back and play a major part in 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 three really positive results four really positive results resulting in three, three clean sheets is is you know is fantastic leadership there so what, what about Boreham Wood then a, a team who a bit up and down but got a couple of winners under their belt of late um what are you going to get from them, do you think? Um, they're actually better than the results suggest. You know, um, I'm very fortunate. I can look into a lot of the data on, on how teams are playing and whether they're stronger or weaker than their league position might suggest. And, um, you know, I, I actually spoke to the Bournemouth manager two and a half weeks ago about a different subject. And, um, you know, he was very upbeat and said, you know, that they'd been playing a lot better than their results. And, you know, there's only one team that had really 
you know deserve to beat them. And um, I think that's starting to show now. His team's just starting to build and build a bit of momentum. So you know we're probably playing them at the wrong time. They're confident. Anyone that can go up to Hartlepool and and get an away result are, are in a good place. Um, I thought they was very professional live on telly in the FA Cup the other week. So. And they played a system for, for two or three years that they all know the jobs and the ins and outs of it all and how to play it. So it's going to be tough. I think it will be a little bit more open um, maybe than the Woking game as far as you know they'll come and express themselves and, and try and take the game to us. Um, and they've got really good attacking threat. So, yeah, it's quite an exciting game. What about your team? I know you had Richard Brindley back at the weekend. You were talking last week about West Thomas maybe being close. Any, any more players um, might be back for, for this one? Um, I think they're all in sort of getting close to contention now. It's just the fitness element, really, of when you dip them back in or not. You know, Alex Lacey's out training now. Uh, Wes Thomas is out training full time now. Um, Damian McCrory is probably going to be another sort of two weeks to try and really get him where he needs to be. Sam Graham joined in part of training today. So they're all kind of there, but it's just at the level that we want them to come in and play at. Are they. You know, is it too much of a risk to throw them in at that level just yet? Um, so they're, they're the decisions I've got to make and I've got a staff meeting in, in five or ten minutes when I finished here um, where we'll discuss the squad and the pros and cons and, and what the players who aren't in it are doing. So it's it's good to have that problem. Yeah. Good man, thanks Neil. Thank I'll you. leave it there. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, can I ask you, Neil, how proud you are of your your team for for what they've had to deal with in the in the last two months, and probably as, as a manager you'd know better than this because there's obviously some things that we're probably not aware of. You know, COVID breaks, players coming down with COVID, hectic schedule, interrupted schedules. Um, I just want to know, you know, how pleased you are with the team and the response since. Um, obviously, delighted with the response. The last five games, you can't ask too much more than 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 what they're giving. Um, I think I'm proud of the club. And I mean that as a club because the work that the club have done to try and make it a really professionally run, um, safety first club has, has, has come through. Um, you know, that starts at the top with the owners and Jason Turner. They, they, you know, they really have been strict on protocols. Um, and obviously, despite all of that, we've had the, the, the sort of ups and downs of the COVID, which I think most clubs are going through now. And... If you remember when we was one of the first people to shut down, I did allude to the fact it will be going on up and down the country and you're seeing it more and more. But, um, you know, hopefully, and it is a touchwood scenario, you know, 75% of our squad probably have had it and are carrying the antibodies. Now, I know that's not evidence that you won't get it again, but it certainly gives us a, a better chance maybe of, of not having um, outbreaks going forward over the next, uh, you know, maybe three to six months. Because I imagine, you know, as a as a manager, you you have a design and an idea of how you want to start the season. But I, I don't think anybody can quite anticipate, you know, obviously the glut of injuries as well. I mean, we've not even mentioned that, you know, losing Callum Roberts, losing Wes, losing Wes Thomas, losing Alex Lacey. I mean, that's for the team to come together and to carry on and get results. You, you, know, you must be absolutely thrilled with that. Yeah, because I think a lot of the time when you have, let's say, we've got a 22 man squad, um, a lot of the time in a lot of squads, you know, within the budget, they they put a lot more of the budget maybe into the first 14 and have a, a have a sort of cheaper or younger back back eight and sometimes that's when the injuries do come that you might not be as strong or the bench might not be as strong and what we try to do is is spread the, the money evenly and, and challenge everybody to be in the squad so although we've got a small squad um, it's a squad that we feel that is very competitive and obviously the challenge was to get people like Ruben and Eli up to speed and, and, and in a place where they could could do themselves justice for us which we feel we have um, so that's massively helped because you know Eli and Ruben coming into good form has happened at a time when we didn't have Wes Thomas and we didn't have you know certain players that, that it might have uh, might have hindered us but um, you know thankfully we've we've got good players here that have managed to keep the band, band rolling so to speak. Now you've got players coming back. How difficult does it make your job to choose the bench? <laughs> it does absolutely. It's it's been a massive challenge for me now. You know when players are back fit to to disappoint people and them not even be in a squad. Um, so it is. You know, like I say, with the boys that are coming back, it's all about have we done as much as we can on the training field with them, um, and is the next step only going to be game time? Um, 
so so yeah, we, we're weighing all that up, and like I say, we've got a meeting this afternoon where we'll go through all the pros and cons of everybody. But also from my point of view, it's a chance when you get everybody back fit. It's a chance to make sure that the levels in training are where they need to be. You know, you need, you want people to be looking over their shoulder and saying, if I'm not at it every single day. I give the manager reason to say I don't think you've trained well enough and he's in the squad and not you. Um, I've just got to ask you about Enzio Baldwin. I know you, you touched on him after the game on Saturday. How pleased are you with him and, and, and the way he's performed in, in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, we get, we're getting there. Like I say, me and Enzio have had a good chat a few weeks back and you know, I knew and he knew that he wasn't quite where he can be and we've had a chat and it doesn't happen overnight so the fact that he's put in some really good performances in the meantime is a good sign and, and we keep driving and wanting more and, and I'll keep sort of kicking him up the backside trying to get more out of him. Um, so yeah, delighted with his response from the bench, you know, even before the game, you know, when players aren't in the squad sometimes they sulk, they're human, they can sulk and that can affect their performance. NCO, I heard him before the game. You know, getting around, talking to people, demanding from people before the game, even you know, and that's that's the sign of a team player that, for that game, accepted somebody else was going to do the hard yards early, and and he might be doing the hard yards later on. Um, I mean, you've got yourself into a, a fantastic position. Um, what 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 are the challenges now? Um, because obviously, is it is it more difficult to stay there, or or do you get more momentum from being in this position so early on in the season? Um, it's it's nice momentum. It's always nice winning games, having that feeling. And if you're going to be there at the end of the season, you have to, you know, you can't just come with a late run with 15 games to go. You have to kind of pick up points throughout the season. It's an it's an absolute slog. And the challenges really are, and and this is the bit where I hope fans realise. You know, I know we're in this league and we're a big club, but none none of these games are easy. They're they're so difficult to win, even though we might have you know, a strong squad for the league. They're so difficult to win. Like Woking the other day, I praised their manager before the game and you could see Woking have got great ways of entering your box and making you defend. And if you're talking after a home game against Woking saying your two centre-halves were outstanding, they defended everything that come their way, that shows you how difficult this league is. You know, Bromley are a huge, powerful, athletic team. You know, anyone that can go and get a result against Bromley is going to have to earn it. And that's without your talkies who are flying and relentless. Sutton United are relentless at the moment. And, um, you know, I think Hartlepool are a strong team and they've found themselves dropping back down there because it's so hard to consistently win games. And that's the challenge. The other day we didn't play great. Uh, we didn't play the way we can. The opposition made that difficult, but we found a way to win it. And that was what was most pleasing. Um, I, I was, and that brings me on final question. Um, you're winning in different ways, though, as well, aren't you? I mean, on Saturday, you had, to, you had to battle and scrap against Chesterfield. You had to show great powers of recovery against Worldstone. You, you played some terrific, entertaining, fluid football. As, as a manager, do you think you are better equipped this year than last season? I Did hope so. Good? Yeah, I hope so. Um, you know, all our worst spells last season, when we had a little bit of a sticky spell, I look back through it, I put all the scores up on my board in... You know, in order, and the one thing we had in six games, I think we conceded 18 goals last season in a spell, and that was our worst spell because we were conceding set piece. It wasn't like we were getting cut open; it was silly mistake set piece. But you know, no coincidence. We've gone unbeaten five games, and we've started to nail down a lot of mistakes. We've defended our set pieces better, so it's keeping on top of that. Because if you look at our team, you'd like to think there won't be loads and loads of games where we've got naught next to our name on the score line because we've got the threats that we've got. So it's if the team, and I mean the team, not just a back four, they get the praise for it, but if the team are are excellent at doing their stuff without the ball, it's a great it gives us a great opportunity to 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 get results as this season goes on. And everybody has to mark from set pieces and do their jobs, not just the back four. Has the pressing been something that you've been working on this season? Because I noticed it in the last last two games, you know, you've been very good without the ball in terms of pressing the opposition. Is that is that something you've worked on this season or uh, is that just naturally? Yeah, we've worked on distances um, throughout the squad. So if your distances from your centre forward at the top to your centre halves at the back become really stretched as a team, it can feel like there's spaces around the pitch and, and, you, and you, you can look open. So we've worked very hard at that and that could mean that you know, Kyle Wooten's pressing higher up the pitch and everybody's going with him, but then our back players have got to be up on the halfway line um, you know, 
pressing with it and, and vice versa if there's times we can't press as a team we need to you know get ourselves back in our shape keep them distances right and then when it is on to set the traps and try so it is something we work on particularly when you play against different systems you know a 3-5-2 can cause you different problems from a from a 4-2-3 run or whatnot. lovely top man thank you best luck for tomorrow mate cheers hi Neil how are you good thank you good stuff uh, yeah just a few follow questions from what uh, the guys have asked really um yeah, you mentioned they're kind of like about, um, although not Sarah a bigger team, about how there are no easy games in the National League. I spoke to um, a striker at Mansfield, Jamie Reid, who joined from Torquay to Mansfield, and he said there's not really much between League Two and the National League in terms of um, in terms of competitiveness and how close the teams are. Is that something that you've noticed and would agree with? I don't know. I mean, the, the proof in the pudding is to look at Barrow and Harrogate um, in the level above. I know Harrogate are going through a difficult time. They started really, really well. Um, they're going for a difficult time, and um, Barrow uh, are, are in the probably in the bottom half of that that league. So, I do think that it is a level up for a reason. Um, sometimes the level from us to League Two isn't as great as as perhaps League Two to League One, and certainly League One to Championship. So, I think there's a smaller gap, but I still think there is. I still think a team that get that wins our league, you know, might be a top twelve team in the league above, but certainly. They'd have to be very good to go and be a top three team in the league above. And I know it's a couple of um, a couple of games into um, December now, but as we mentioned last week, I think it's eight or nine fixtures you guys have got in the month of December. I just kind of like wondered what you made of the um, of how intense the schedule is. Um, it's all right. It's what it is. It's Christmas, and and you know we always expect that at Christmas, um, considering. The fact we had that week off, considering the fact that at one point the league was going ahead and we were like three games behind everybody, languishing in 14th place. You know, you worry then because you think, oh, you know, we're going to have to catch up and injuries and whatnot. But um, to be almost up at level with most of the teams, maybe the odd game in hand, um, it, it's OK. You know, um, obviously, unfortunately, we never got to play in the FA Cup for various reasons, but which might have added a fixture or two. But... Um, you, you, you know, this world's a mess, as we know at the moment. It's been a really, really tough year, and it's just a pleasure to be able to do your job and, and play football, albeit with, without the supporters. Sure, and, and yeah, I haven't said that. I guess it's the same for everyone. It's not as if, like you say, there are some teams that have already played 15, 16. Everyone's kind of in the same boat in terms of uh, how intense the. the yeah, and is. and and I'm I'm although we've had a real injury glut, I'm I'm very privileged with the the squad of players I've got. I'm very happy with them, and you know. When Callum Roberts had a, we thought might be in a longer term injury, and the ability to bring out, bring someone like Tom Walker in shows the the the, the quality of the owners we've got as well. Um, to recognise there's a period that could be crucial to our hopes at the end of the season, and you know to make sure we've got what we need to try and do it. It's tough, and, and, and just finally for me, I saw um, on uh, the Notts County website earlier that the Supporters Association has paid for resistance bands for uh, members of the under 18 squad so that they can. Do some of their training programs from home. Just wanted to get um, get your thoughts on that. It's brilliant. Um, they, they, you know they've done so many things over the years. If you go back through most of the stuff that's at this club, has come through through them guys. And it's you know at a time when they can't even enjoy watching their team play and 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 celebrating to be still doing stuff behind the scenes that helps the club grow is is fantastic. So you know they're they're a, they're a brilliant organisation, and we thank them for everything they've done over the years. Stuff. Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you for your time, and uh, yeah, best luck for tomorrow. Thanks, Neil. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. Pete, have you got anything? Yeah, you're right, Neil. Hi. Yeah. Um, four points from six so far this month. Uh, are you the type of manager to set yourself a target for the month, especially if you're over the festive period? Um, yeah, maybe. I have done it before. Uh, I'm not thinking of it so much at the moment um, because. The games are thick and fast. I've just kind of tried to focus on the schedule and, and how we're going to get through the games and, and try and get everybody back fit. So I do do it sometimes. Um, at the moment, it's I looked at the, the schedule of fixtures we had and I just thought, you know, I knew how tough Woking would be. Uh, any game away from home is difficult to win and Bournemouth I, I really respect. And then you all of a sudden you're going into Yeovil, who I know are bottom, but they're a lot better than bottom. Um, that's a false false position from, and then Stockport, and you start going. Just take this one game at a time because each game's got its own challenges, and you know, can we keep momentum going? Can we stay unbeaten through this period? Is is a challenge in itself. Yeah, um, I think Jake touched on a bit about uh, the festive period, but how has that impacted? Because obviously, Christmas is a time for team bonding, perhaps, 
how's that impacted with COVID and everything? Is that well, right off? The Christmas do's off, isn't it? So um, I, think that's, <laughs> I, think, I think that's what, mind you, that might solve me a problem because normally something happens on the Christmas do that comes back and haunts you. But um, uh, it's, I feel for the lads, I feel for everybody in society at the moment, you know, um, it's tough, but the sacrifice we're all making when you see them numbers roll up every day of, you know, 500 deaths or whatever it happens to be every day and you know what the people and their families have been through not being together during that time is is horrendous so let's just you know the scientists have done a brilliant job with these vaccines let's hope that that gets us back to some normality and the social interaction that we all crave comes back and we can all have a smile and a and a laugh and um, you know even give each other a cuddle. Uh, Carl Wotton saw his penalty saved on Saturday, thankfully redeemed himself later on. Is there any word you have with him about the penalty save or is that just something you let him deal with? No, it's let him deal with it. And, and do you know what? Um, people have got different ways, managers of dealing with penalties and stuff. I'm quite flexible with penalties. So whoever's confident enough to take it can take it. I don't, you know, Deno was a very good penalty taker before. Um, if Kyle wants to take the next one, he can. I, I, I made a joke after that we'll be taking them off him, but it's that's for the players to sort out. The players that are on the pitch, if somebody's confident and it's like a free kick, if somebody fancies a free kick, um, then if you feel confident, great. You know, you've got the freedom to, to do it. And like I say, if Kyle wants to take the next penalty, he can. He just better make sure he scores it. And, and lastly, Boreham Wood into the third round of the FA Cup. Do you think that's going to give them a lot more confidence than obviously their league position suggests at the moment? I think they're confident anyway. I said before their manager, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago and he said then that they were playing better than their, their results had warranted. And as a manager, it's important you see that. You know, I know everyone responds to results and don't see it, but as a manager, you know if your team's playing well and deserving to win games and you also know if your team's struggling. And um, that's where you have to differentiate and take the emotion out of how the fans might be feeling and say, you know, we're doing all right. And I, I'm lucky I get a lot of data and a lot of feedback on our performances. So quite regularly I can see we're on the right track and we're playing well and we're deserving to win. And you know that anything can happen in football that can change that result. So I think Bournemouth Wood are a good team. I think every year he manages to get them in and around the playoffs um, despite losing players. Um, so I think Luke's done a great job. And... I've always found the FA Cup to be a good thing. You know, Stockport have got a great tie and I think to have that to look forward to, um, but no, you've got to keep your, your your focus throughout that month in the league. I've had it at Wimbledon. Uh, we had a tie against Liverpool and we had an unbeaten December going into it. So I think it can be a real lift for you um, and it's going to be a testing game for us.